I've had a lot of nascent questions regarding computing and gaming in general lately. And a lot of it is actually thanks to the fact that the 9900K has come out. Like, what? how far has Intel come since the Core 2 Duo days? Can we make an 8-core processor into something really crappy and see how it does over several generations? Does the RTX card simply just work? And in today's video, what is better? One really fast core or eight really slow ones. So we're gonna be running this i9-9900K as fast as we can get it on one single core, which is gonna be in the region of like 5.3 gigahertz. And then we're gonna divide that 5.3 gigahertz amongst all eight cores and see which is faster, one speedy boy or eight slow boys, because that's just something that we can now answer with a really good eight core processor from Intel. Unfortunately, Ryzen, you just can't get it above four, 4.5 gigahertz with just one core. So Intel is the only one who can save us with this. So we're gonna be running everything on this Z390 godlike from MSI with the RTX 2080 Ti Gaming X Trio from MSI again with the Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB stuff from Corsair and the Deep Cool Castle 240 RGB, making it all look good and answering the question once and for all, one core versus eight core. And before we dive into the actual experimentation, I wanna let you know that this video is brought to you by Ting, my friends. Ting is the mobile carrier that does things differently. They have no startup fees, no contracts, no plans. Best of all, you pay for only what you use. Yes, if you only need one minute to talk to somebody once a month, you can absolutely have that with your phone service. They have nationwide LTE coverage, which means you'll have great coverage no matter where you are from coast to coast, and almost any phone will work with Ting. You can bring your brand new iPhone, you can bring your old Razer, doesn't matter, anything works. And they have reliable customer service that wants to chat with you. They'll answer you within two calls, and they also have Discord support in case that's something that's of interest to you as a modern techie for your phone service. I used them back when I lived in the United States right before we moved to South Africa, and our average phone bill between me and my wife was about $48. So we spent about $24 a month. And if you use the link that's in the video description, ufd.ting.com, you can save $25 off your first Ting bill or $25 in store credit for a phone on the Ting store. Either way you want to slice it, ufd.ting.com. The link for that will be in the video description. Check them out. Can't recommend Ting enough. Use them, love them. And now that they're a sponsor of the channel, even happier. So let's move on to the, the video now. So we're in the BIOS for the system, and I actually think I missed spoke earlier. I think we'll be able to actually hit 5.5 gigahertz on one of the cores. So let's go ahead and come in and do that now. So we'll go to the OC menu, CPU features. We're gonna disable hyper-threading, and then we're gonna set active processors to just one. We've got one going there. And then let's let's do a 55 core ratio. Let's just, uh, we'll leave it on dynamic mode so that it can do its own thing. And then we should set it to XMP so that we have RAM running at 3200 megahertz, 16, 18, 18, 36 for the RAM timings. And that should be good. The godlike gaming is actually pretty proficient in setting the proper voltage. So let's try 5.5 gigahertz, see if we get anywhere. 1.45 volts. Yes, 1.475 volts, let's go. Now we just have to make sure it's stable and everything's working but this is further than we got before. I can't tell if this is taking so long because it's one core or if because the core is not stable. I think it's because it's one core. Oh my. Okay, well, let's figure out what's happening here. 100% CPU usage. Gosh, dang. Oof. Change graph to overall, okay. One core, one thread, and then we are rocking 5.5 gigahertz. Look at that. That is crazy slow. All right, and then we got 3,200 megahertz on the RAM. Aye, 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 this is, this is a slow boy. This is terrible. Okay, let's make sure it's stable by, let's go ahead and do a Cinebench test. Uh-oh, did that crash the system? I think it crashed the system. But like, just like with it loading into Windows, I can't tell, is this because it's running on one core or is it because it's actually broken now? I think it's actually broken. Let's retry. Since we're only running on one core, hopefully the voltage won't be an issue. 1.5 volts. As far as temperatures go, hopefully it can just handle it. Okay, so we've got the one core running at 73 degrees. It's drawing about 43 watts right now. Obviously it's not under super load. 5.5 gigahertz, 1.5 volts. That's what we need. Let's try Cinebench again. Just open it this time. Yes, 
Okay, 1.5 volts is the, the stable boy. Oh, this is gonna be horrible. Task manager use, is using 15%. Okay, I'm closing down task manager, so it's not using it. Okay, now it's time to see how badly this is gonna do. 5.5 gigahertz, Cinebench, it's time to start it. And it broke the system, the system died. Gosh dang it. So it can handle the load of freaking Windows, but it can't handle the load of actually running the test. Well, 73 degrees on one core isn't bad, so I'm gonna keep upping the voltage until this works. Okay, I increased the voltage yet again. We're at 1.55 volts. Run. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, 1.55 volts and not good enough. Okay, well, that we're, we're abandoning 5.5. I think we'll have to go for 5.4. At 1.55 volts, if it can't run at 5.5, the chip's not gonna work. 5.4, let's go ahead and do that. All right, 5.45 gigahertz at 1.475 volts. And we're running, we're running a pretty decent, let's just see if Cinebench works. That's, that's gonna be the marker of what's going on. Does Cinebench run? Yes, 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 it's running. We're at 82 degrees Celsius. Got 45 watt power draw just from one core, but it looks like we're gonna be pretty stable. Max of 82. So we're running in the like 70 degree region on one core. And now this is going to take a while. So we will wait until it's done. You buy, you buy a $550 processor and then you have to wait an hour for Cinebench to actually work. That's how this works. Okay, there we go. A score of 207 for the Cinebench score, which obviously would also be the single core score, single thread score, because that's all it's using anyways. So max temp of 82, we were hovering in the 70 region, and then it takes about 45 watts. So we're, we're gonna do a full suite of benchmarking, but let's just go ahead and uh, let's, let's hop on the bandwagon of video game crazes and see just how badly this thing is gonna work for Fortnite. This is why cores were invented. <laughs> Did it crash? No, it didn't. Oh my. What is going on? There's nothing we can do. Yeah, I, I can't wait here for this. Like, I can't even see what's taking so long. I'm done, we'll come back to this. Okay, Fortnite's taking way too long to do live, so I'm just gonna, I don't even know what happened. It's like completely locking up the system. So, restarting, just go back into Windows, trying again, booting into another game that's not as awful, and then we'll do all of the benchmarking off camera because this, this is a nightmare thus far. Oh, this is, this is moving a lot quicker. So Fortnite, not good for one core. Locks up your system. Steam, ready to go. Oh man, they're all gonna be bad. Let's try Hitman. Hopefully everything just works. 20 FPS, oof. 100% CPU utilization, 5.4 megabytes, gigahertz, 5.4 gigahertz. And then the GPU is just not having to work even a day in its life. That is awful. This is worse than the Core 2 Quad. And the issue isn't that like the frame rate's not okay. Like it's okay at like 28 to 30, that's playable if you just have a garbage system, right? Like you, you when, when you don't have a good system, that's okay. It's the stuttering. It is the ups and downs that are just making this horrific, which is because it only has one thread to like process everything on. So it has to bounce back and forth between itself. Okay, well that, that was an experience. Because all of this is just a mess and it takes forever, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna do all of the benchmarking off camera. But before we go ahead and get that done, let's, let's get the eight cores set up and let's just see Cinebench, let's see how it does in video games and see if it's just even generally more usable than one core, one speedy core. So we, we ran it at around 5.5 gigahertz. If we divide that by eight cores, which we can have here, that's about 680 megahertz per core. So we're gonna run eight cores at 600 odd megahertz per, or roughly 700 megahertz per core. Obviously, I'm gonna try to get it as close as possible. CPU features, keep head threading off. We're gonna use all cores, but then we're gonna have to, what is the lowest that this goes? Let's just try one. It goes to auto. What, two, auto, three, auto, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, it can do eight, but that gives us 800 megahertz based on the base clock of 100. So in order to get 687.5 megahertz, we're gonna have to divide that by eight. So we have to do a base clock of around 85.93, and that gives us 687 megahertz. And hopefully that doesn't affect everything too much. I mean, we shouldn't, yeah, that looks about right. CPU ratio of eight, base clock of 85.93 on eight cores. 
And so that should just be eight really slow cores. Oh, you can already see. Oh, oh, the BIOS is slow. No. Oh, there's so much lag. You can see it, especially when it's changing menu. This is bad. Oh, this is so much worse. But I'm, I'm wondering and I'm thinking that because it has eight cores, it can offload some of like Windows tasks to each core, even if it's going slowly. If you could just be like, here, you handle this while I very slowly work on this one thing, it might be better than it trying to handle everything at once with just one core. This is actually more usable. Running at 687.7 megahertz, and then we've got memory running at about 3200 megahertz there with the same uh, latencies. Okay, oh, that was slow. Typing in Cinebench, getting it to appear but actually installing programs and whatnot, or opening programs rather. We're drawing 13 watts for the processor. I don't know which is worse right now. Okay, let's let's just run Cinebench and see what we get. Hopefully there shouldn't be any crashing because we're at stock voltage and it's just gonna be mightily slow is the thing. Right now it's running at 0.64 volts. So everything, everything should be perfectly stable. We're at about 50 degrees on the processor. We're drawing a total of 14.8 watts. We have a total of 5.4 gigahertz running right now. I don't even wanna know what the single core score is. I can't even tell the computer's on right now. This is so bad. 205, it is slower than the single core by like three points. I am not doing the single core right now. That is, I'm not, I can't do that live. I can't bear to just sit here, but let's, let's, uh, let's, do what we did earlier, which was just getting one single game. Let's just watch one single game happen. We'll do Hitman again, just so we can see what's happening. So far, this the launching Steam is worse with eight cores. So last time the GPU didn't have to do anything. This is more stable. This is a lower frame rate, but it's not like jerky. Do you see this? Like it, it's averaging around 20, but it's just smooth. It's not starting and stopping. And the GPU, obviously, it's working a little bit harder. It's not getting down to the 400 range, or maybe it is, I don't know. But the CPU is not at 100%. So I don't know where the bottleneck is, but it's just, this is smooth. It just works. It just works. I don't know. I don't know which one I would take. Would I want a smoother, slower gameplay? Or would I want to actually be able to use Windows? Like I could play this. I could not play the other one. Okay. Okay, smoother, smoother overall. Well, now the plan is we're gonna re do all of the benchmarking off camera and then we'll get back to you with a conclusion because gosh dang, this is gonna take forever. <sighs> we're done, we're done playing all of the games. Ah, this was not an enjoyable experience. So the first thing I'm gonna do so I'm gonna set this back to being just uh, normal, normal eight core, normal five gigahertz, please. Just, I want some normalcy in my life. Just give me a good, good system load. So we have, we have numbers. We have all of the data that we need to know as far as how bad of an idea this was, which was pretty rough. Obviously you guys saw that the one core ran really fast, really hot, drew a lot of wattage, 45 watts compared to the eight cores at like half as much temperature and only 15 watts for eight cores that are really slow. The Cinebench score obviously was really comparable. Um, the single core score on the freaking eight cores was only 30. It was a Cinebench score of 30. Do you know how long I had to wait? Ages, I had to wait ages. Anyways, now we're back, now we're back to the normal eight cores. This is exactly what we wanted. So let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the games. You can see that it kind of goes back and forth between one core and eight core, depending on which one you want to say has the higher average FPS. But the main thing is that the lows, the 1% and 0.1% lows are traditionally just completely higher with the eight cores, which means the, the game was more stable. As you guys saw with Hitman, it was just a smoother experience, which is everything that we wanted out of this. However, while, while these benchmark numbers can show you exactly what the, what the frame rate was, what it does not show Show you was the freaking plight I had to go through in order to get the games to even launch. Shadow of the Tomb Raider took 45 minutes to launch with one core. 45 minutes. And then guess what? Ashes of the Singularity took 45 minutes to launch. And then when the benchmark started, 
It did it in like three frames. It only displayed three frames and then it gave me an average FPS of zero because it took so freaking long to actually render out any scene whatsoever with one really fast core. And so that's what we saw with the one core was that there was actually several games that just could not be played, which was Ashes of the Singularity. Even though I got it to run, it was super unplayable. And then all of the games that are with you play, Assassin's Creed Origins, Far Cry 5, and Ghost Recon Wildlands, none of them worked with one core. However, with eight cores, what the only game that we couldn't launch was Metro Last Light. So overall, this was, this was devastating to my psyche. This was uh, something that allowed me to know that time is always passing and you will, likely die soon. That's what I got out of this experiment. And that it seems overall, even though it can be slow in certain instances, especially in the BIOS, I would take eight really slow cores over one really fast one, even if the average frame rate wasn't higher in all instances, it was at least playable. I'd rather take smoother, slower gameplay than something that's bouncing all over the place all the time, which you guys saw happen with Hitman. And that's kind of what we saw with all of the testing and gameplay. And now I need to go back to actually using my $600 processor the way that it's supposed to be used. I spent a lot of money on you. Please let me play my games. So we're gonna wrap the video up there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, don't forget that this video was brought to you by Ting, who even if one core and eight core is really slow, they aren't, they answer the phone call uh, for customer service if you're looking to get nationwide LTE coverage coast to coast and you just wanna join them and then you wanna find out, they wanna talk to you because they appreciate real good customer service and then the rates are really fantastic as well. You pay for what you use. Whereas in this case, for this video, we didn't pay for what we used. We overpaid and got nothing, which is traditional mobile phone carriers. So check out Ting, UFD.Ting.com, link in the video description. I'm going to wrap it up there. Let us know if you have any other stupid, crazy experiments that you want us to try that you've always wanted to know, but never really wanted to have the patience to go through yourself, because I don't. I'm going to make Tank do the next one. I'll tell you that much. I'm wrapping the video up there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too. Sweet eight, course. Sweet. Never abandoned me again. <laughs>